Hmm. My apologies. Risley is a trustworthy man. I fought hard for the title and reputation he now has. I expect you to think that I've simply been duped by his flattery and appearance of loyalty, but to that, I would quote the Inazuman proverb, the words unspoken are the flower, which means some things are best left unsaid. I don't know how Sijuin is faring these days, but if I hear so much as the whiff of a rumor that she's being bullied, I shall summon Risley here and demand an explanation. She's so kind and vulnerable. She brought me some camera film the last time she visited, and asked to listen to more of my commentary on the water of Natlar. How long is it until her next vacation? Their performances are just fascinating, don't you think? They draw you into a magical world where, on one hand, everything that takes place is part of an elaborate deception, but on the other, all manner of miracles are possible if you are only willing to believe. I regret to say that after my various interactions with her, such as when I inadvertently angered her and when I accepted her apology. And even now, in spite of the guilt I continue to feel over what happened to her father, I feel very distant from her, as if I'm observing the starry sky from the bottom of a deep lake. It is by no means intentional, and I also know it is not something that I can easily make up for. Unlike water, emotion does not settle quickly once agitated nor is it naturally inclined towards equilibrium. Cloran's peerless skills have made her the most powerful champion duelist in our nation. As a successor to the Mare Chaussée hunters of old, she plays a vital role in ensuring the fairness and impartiality of the courtroom. Also, she is actually not as stoic as she might appear. Greetings. I am the Chief Justice, or Eudex, of Fontaine, but you may simply address me by using my surname, Nervilette. Not because I wish to keep my distance from you. No, I am merely conscious that being overly familiar may bring the impartiality of the judiciary into question in some people's eyes. If you have any requests or concerns, then, to the extent permissible by law at least, we can sit down and discuss them together as we partake of some imported water from Chaoyin Village. I see the value in my own work, but I also see the meaning in all the endeavors of the people of Fontaine. I believe I will continue to take pride in fulfilling my duties. Water comes in many flavors to the discerning palate. Mondstadt's water is crisp and pure, while water from Liyue has an enduring aftertaste. In Inazuma, the water possesses a depth of flavor unlike any other. Sumeru's water, meanwhile, has a rich and complex flavor profile, but it must be savored patiently to fully appreciate it. Melusines are beautiful creatures. They are the pride of Fontaine. Be sure to befriend them, and cause them no harm. Ah, my apologies. This heavy rain must be quite an inconvenience for you. <sighs> it's over. What's that saying again? A uh, bolt from the blue? Yes. Yes, I believe that captures how it feels to me. Snow is in fact one of water's natural self-cleansing mechanisms. But human activity tends to reduce snow's purity, so do not consume it. I find that the uh, beauty of bright sunlight is best appreciated from the indoors through a window. I cannot help but feel that you bringing me here is some sort of an assassination attempt. Good morning. I hope you have a wonderful day. Ah, it's past noon. You must be looking forward to your afternoon tea or coffee break. I certainly am. Good evening. I hope you have not encountered any unpleasantness today. Good night. I am quite fond of the image of a perfectly still body of water, and it is on this note that I would like to wish you a peaceful, undisturbed sleep. May no waves of emotional distress ripple through your dreams tonight. I am no rabid fan of trials. I preside over them only out of duty, for this is the task that has been entrusted to me. So you have heard of that local legend as well? <sighs> who told you about that? Or more pertinently, who was responsible for spreading it in the first place? Well, never mind. I don't think that the Hydro Dragon would weep per se. I think he just finds himself a little stirred when he gets a taste of the tears that have been shed on this land, on account of all of the emotions they contain. 
I was once advised to wear a counterfeit vision so that I might more easily intervene during moments of crisis. To be quite frank, I was not enamored by this suggestion, nor the implication that one must only exercise the power that is rightfully theirs under false pretenses. With that said, however, I have developed a newfound appreciation for the value of human yearning and determination, having spent considerable time around vision-bearing humans. Excuse me? You're saying that even some members of the Seven don a counterfeit vision before mingling with their people? <clears throat> My apologies. I was just caught off guard by the absurdity of the situation. Fontaine does have some rather intriguing laws on its books. For instance, it is forbidden to release any flying objects during the first three days of each month. During the dry season, all bivalves that wash ashore belong to the Hydro Archon, while all other mollusks belong to the people. No domestic pets shall be named after Farina. Tomato ketchup is to be consumed in restaurants only as a condiment, never on its own. And finally, melusines are to be addressed using she-her pronouns, never the impersonal it-its. That last one was my personal contribution. Some days my mind wanders, and I fantasize about walking into the rain. <sighs> oh, but don't worry. My flights of fancy don't distract me from my work. The bishop's ancestry can be traced directly back to the Fontamercy, which is why they are so adept at evolution. I am reminded of an old custom that the dragons once observed. We would take a sip of our perished young brethren's blood. Whenever the tides are disrupted by the motion of the moon and stars, the water within the bodies of us hydroorganisms surges up towards our heads, reminding us that our deceased kin will soon be revived. From my observations, humans have a tendency to view themselves as being in opposition with nature. And whenever this point is raised, someone is always quick to respond by declaring that humans are in fact a part of nature like any other organism. To someone like me, however, who knows an inkling of the truth, what would be most beneficial is if human civilization and the natural world of this planet could seek ways to coexist with one another. I usually do my best to avoid forming personal relationships or even collaborating with others outside of established procedures. But you have shown yourself to be trustworthy, and you have no problematic entanglements with Fontaine's local factions. Therefore, I would be pleased to journey with you. This is something that I can only say in private. I could never publicly share my views on this matter. It positively baffles me that Fanta has managed to become such a popular drink. Though I suppose its appeal to humans is not beyond comprehension. One can both rehydrate and replenish blood sugar in one gulp and at an exceptionally cheap price. I went to see an opera recently. It was about a lady whose personal charm and manipulative schemes allowed her to continue to dominate the affairs of the grand mansion where she lived even after her death, like a ghost that refused to be exorcised. The acting was impeccable and the story exceptional. It also reminded me of the current state of affairs in the real world. For a number of reasons, I rarely leave Fontaine. As a result, though I enjoy tasting spring water from all over the world, I always have it delivered to me here, rather than collecting it myself. And yes, subtle as the flavor differences between samples of different regions may be, I am perfectly capable of distinguishing between them. Do you still doubt me? I am the Udex. I do not lie. I have to say, my daily life is not without its inconveniences. For instance, I often find myself stepping on my robes as I sit down, or squashing my coiffure against the chair. And if I lean my head too far back, sometimes my hair even gets caught in the ornamentation. Nevertheless, I must wear these garments to maintain the dignity of a Chief Justice, and endure whatever inconveniences this entails. Incidentally, the world at large appears to operate on this general principle too. Everyone is faced with an identity that they must accept, endure, understand, and eventually learn to coexist with. This has been my experience all along. Water tasting is a rather sophisticated discipline. Pyroheated water has the standard au naturel flavor found ubiquitously in the natural world, while water boiled using charcoal has distinctly rustic notes. Similarly, 
While cryo-chilled water is cold but otherwise unremarkable, the frozen rivers of Snezhnaya, when melted, produce a water with an entirely different flavor profile altogether. People seem to respond to the sight of a man in the rain without an umbrella, as if it were some sort of strange spectacle. Animals can survive for weeks without food, but merely a few days without water. There is no dish that could ever compare to pure, unadulterated water. With that in mind, food items that contain plenty of liquid are the next best thing. How can people bring themselves to consume deep-fried foods or grilled food with no sauce? The worst culprits, in my view, are those charcoal-baked Argelenach cakes. Surely even eating a dehumidifying agent would be kinder on the stomach. Hmm, delicious. An abundance of juices and the ingredients have been cooked to perfection. Hmm, a fine effort indeed. My only advice would be to increase the liquid content and reduce the amount of fat. Hmm, <laughs> too dry. A dish devoid of moisture has no way to convey the intentions of the chef. Ah, so it is your birthday. Happy birthday. I do not know if rain is in the forecast today, but let me see what I can do. I'm a little more familiar with you now. I can match your movements. Apparently, I'll have to show a little more of my true capabilities. I did not realize that you had such a penchant for getting into dangerous situations. So this is what you're truly capable of? And I shall have to get serious if I wish to catch up with you. Now that I have reclaimed one of the seven authorities from the hands of the usurpers, I have regained my true form. I am now a fully-fledged dragon, powerful enough to judge the rest of the gods. My final destiny is to judge the usurper king in the heavens above. But until that time comes, I will lend my power to you.